here in the plains of South Africa, we have come across the mighty. It may look like a horse, but obviously there are a few obvious differences. The black and white stripes make it look a little bit like a zebra. And the mane is designed to keep flies away from the top of the neck where all of the veins go. Um, it's the one evolutionary trait in history where archaeologists, paleontologists, anyone who studies any kind of science has fascinating creature. Welcome to Seven Days of Zebra. Starting off the news this week, NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS rocket, has been wheeled out of the Kennedy Space Center this week, ready for its maiden launch at the end of the month. When it becomes so, the SLS will be the most powerful operational rocket on Earth, and NASA claims the most powerful rocket ever built, although the variants launching with this mission won't be as powerful as other rockets. This mission is named Artemis 1, with the program being named after Apollo's mythical sister. Artemis 2 will be the first crewed launch and is scheduled for 2024, with NASA hoping that Artemis 3, the return to the Moon's surface, can take place in 2025. To transport this crew, the SLS will be carrying the Orion capsule, which will eventually work with SpaceX's Starship to land people on the Moon once again. NASA planned to utilise the Orion capsule for its long-term plans in spaceflight, which includes the possibility for multiplanetary exploration. An exciting step in the future of spaceflight, we'll be sure to cover the test when it happens. In other news, a study published in the journal Astrobiology has looked at the similarities in cold underwater environments of those on Earth and other worlds, like Jupiter's icy moon Europa. Researchers at the University of Texas found that these freezing under-ice environments could both contain a substance rather like snow, a softer collection of ice crystals usually referred to as frazil ice. This theory also affects how pure the water under Europa's ice sheet is. It could suggest that it is far purer than previous estimates, with a much less salty content. This isn't the first time models of such activity have been used to understand the inner parts of other planets and moons, and it does of course shed further light on Europa's potential habitability, but of course, there's still plenty of further research to be done in that regard. And now over to Ben, who has just returned from Europa. Thanks, Doc. Also in the news for this week is the incredibly exciting naming and description of one of the most unique dinosaurs that has been discovered in quite a while, the fascinating little Jacopiel Canuicura. Found in a formation dating to the early late Cretaceous of Argentina, Jacopiel is known from a fairly decent amount of the skeleton, with an almost complete lower jaw, bits of skull bones, teeth, parts of vertebrae and the limbs, rib pieces, and a lot of osteoderms, as well as other elements. Now, the really interesting thing about this new dinosaur is the fact that the researchers have found it to be related to the armoured dinosaurs, hence the presence of osteoderms, bony armour in the skin. The armoured dinosaurs, the ankylosaurs and stegosaurs, form a group together called the Thyreophorans, and Jacopil is found to be a very basal member of Thyreophora. Strangely for this lineage, Jacopil actually walked bipedally, and due to its anatomical features is thought to likely be closely related to the basal Thyreophoran Scutellosaurus from the US and Skeletosaurus from the UK. Not only would this make Jacopil the first ever definite Thyreophoran found in Argentinian Patagonia, but the fact that Scutellosaurus and Skeletosaurus are both early Jurassic in age, and Jacopil is late Cretaceous, infers a ghost lineage of a basal Thyreophoran group of almost 100 million years, an absolutely mind-blowing thought. There has been some discussion online about the possibility of Jacopil representing a basal ceratopsian though, or perhaps even a completely new lineage of Ornithischian dinosaur, both of which would also be fascinating developments. There's no doubt that Jacopil is a truly important discovery, highlighting the fact that more amazing paleontological finds are still out there to be made. Also in the news is a very cool study looking at how the orbit evolved in different archosaur lineages. It has found that, although the majority of species kept a circular orbit, large carnivorous species actually developed a greater diversity of orbit shape. This was most notable in the theropod dinosaurs, with elliptical and keyhole-shaped orbits evolving in some species. 
Using biomechanical modeling techniques, the research found that this is due to these shapes being good at dissipating the stresses inflicted on the skull during feeding, without the need for more reinforcement of the skull structure. A very cool discovery indeed. Finally for this week, we also have the report of a new sauropod species. Named Perigosaurus lapaz, it's a medium-sized early U sauropod from the Lower Jurassic of Colombia, known from a single dorsal vertebra. Interestingly, this bone represents the northernmost occurrence of a sauropod from South America, and supports the idea that U sauropods had a large geographic distribution in the early to mid Jurassic before Pangaea fragmented further. Another very interesting new paper. Back to Doug in the studio. Well, that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on Sunday for our second episode of our South Africa series.